Rich, I want to pivot back to the book here. There's a big chapter in your book, the 20 red flags. I think the top 20. Is it the mm-hmm. is it the 20 or is it the top 20? And if it's the top 20, what is one two that maybe you've left off the list? Yeah, that there's there's actually 21 in the second edition. I added another one, which is a woman that's not willing to enter your frame and follow your lead. Uh, but there's loads and loads of red flags out there. Like these are the main ones. I, I mean, I could write an entire book and just call it the red flag book and put <laughs> hundreds of hundreds of red flags. The problem is, is that that's really going to discourage men from dealing with women <laughs> entirely. I mean, already giving them a list of 20 is like, well, my ex-wife had all 18 of them or my last ex-girlfriend had, you know, 19. Of them. It's like, well, you know, like these things exist and you're starting to connect the dots because they're problematic. Now, You can invite a woman into your life on a long-term basis, make her your girlfriend, make her your wife, whatever it is that you decide to do with red flags. It's not that you can't do it. It's just understand that if you do it, you're going to invite unnecessary chaos, problems, drama, stress, potential financial consequences, maybe losing access to your kids because she's a potential, you know, red flag down the road. Um, So vetting women, I think is something that guys need to get good at. And I figured the easiest way to do that is just make, call them red flags and then summarize what the main red flags happen to be that I saw pop up the most in my life and the coaching calls that I had with my clients. And I've had thousands of people that call in my co- a podcast because I do Q and A segments for free on there sort of thing. So I just took what looked like to me as the most common red flags that exist in women, put them in a chapter and said, Hey guys, you know, date these women if you want, but just know that you're inviting a nightmare in your life. And if you want to have a more pleasant life, a woman that's going to compliment your life and not be the focus of it. Try to avoid most of these women if you can, right? Or if she's got one or two of the red flags, just make sure she's working on them. You know, for example, like um, like one that a woman could work on is a addiction. You know, she's a drinker, you know, for example. Well, if she's drinking booze too much or she smashes back boxes of wine, you know, with her girlfriends, that's going to be a problem for you at some point down the road. And if she recognizes that's a problem and she's doing something about it, that's that's a woman that you might want to contemplate keeping around in your life. Yeah, I think some of them kind of kind of feed into each other. I'm just kind of looking at the list here. You know, I would say, you know, a feminist is going to be more likely to probably be a party girl. She's going to be more likely to probably have tattoos and piercings. She's going to be more likely to throw hissy fits. You know, a woman with daddy issues is probably going to be more likely to maybe have a higher notch count because she seek validation in other men. So I think some of them kind of feed in. So would you say there's a hierarchy and what's maybe the top five that like if we can kind of give the guys here today, like begin to look for these and if you can... Like, Yeah, let's do a top five that are an absolute no-go zone, like a red light for sure. Um, I'm going to say feminists for sure. Um, The problem with feminists is they've got a victim mindset. And if you're going to play the victim card, then you have to have an oppressor. And the oppressor for feminists is always men. It's it's always a patriarchy, right? So at some point, um, you you know, push is going to come to shove and she's going to side with the sisterhood and you're just going to be called a entitled male or entitled white male or some nonsense like that. So, um, they're just miserable to be around. So that's, so that that would be number one. Um, the next one I would say on the list would be violent women. Um, there, there should be no place in your life for women that snap. They can't control their emotions. They throw things at you. Um, these are the kinds of women that will, that will get you hauled away in handcuffs and in the backseat of a cruiser, even though she initiated the whole thing. Um, they're not, they're not worth dating. They're not worth friends with benefits. They're like, just stay away from them. If you, if you hear any stories about her uh, being violent in her past, um, a good question to ask her is, Hey, have you ever been in the backseat of a police car? You know, just casual conversation. You have a date, chit chat, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you ever been in the backseat of a police car? You know, sort of thing. And it's funny because if they have been, they love singing like a canary and they'll tell you the story. Right. Um, so that would be the next one. Um, tattoos and piercings. I'm going to say, um, is something that some guys might have a preference for, but with everybody that I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot of doctors now, I've talked to psychologists, I've talked to, uh, sons of doctors that are, that are product of a lineage of doctors and surgeons. And it's like, these guys all make the same observation. Every woman that sort of comes into their clinic with issues, uh, is in an ER room or, or any of these things. Uh, they've, they've created the drama of their circumstances that they're in. And there's a direct correlation between the tattoos and the markings on their body and the bullshit that's going on in their life. So to me, it's a red flag. Again, I understand some guys have a preference for it. Uh, try dating women without tattoos is, you know, one thing that I could at least recommend you trying. Uh, what is that? That's three. Um, so the next one I'm going to give to big notch counts. You absolutely positively cannot be in a long-term relationship 
with a woman that shared her body with dozens and dozens of guys. It's disgusting when you think about it. Um, the data is also very, very clear that if you marry a woman and have children with her, the chances of you having a successful marriage over a long-term basis where she's committed to you and the family and the children and all these things dramatically drops with every man that she shared her body with. In fact, the number starts to go downhill after three. And three is a pretty nominal number for most women today. Because if you're in your 30s, for example, and you're dating women around your age or a little bit younger, it's not that uncommon for them to have slept with a few dozen guys, right? Um, so there's that. And I mean, if I had to pick one more, I'm going to go with single moms. You know, single mo like there's a chapter in my book where I, where I talk about specifically why it's not a good idea to date a woman with kids. And this is coming from a man with a child, right? Like I have a daughter. Uh, there's only one circumstance, which I talk about in the book, where it might be ideal. But for the vast majority of men, it boils down to you're going to have responsibility to another man's children without any authority whatsoever. So when things don't go well, when you try to enforce boundaries, when you try to lay down the rule of the law, because trust me, you're going to be expected to pay for dinners and uh, attend birthday parties and take them on vacations and all this kind of stuff and help little Billy zoom in the scope on his BB gun and all that sort of stuff. But if they misbehave and you try to set boundaries, the vast majority of women uh, that bring children in tow, sometimes uh, multiple children from multiple men, uh, you're going to have the baby daddy drama and you're going to have responsibility of those kids, which you're cucked in essentially, meaning um, you're essentially abandoning your sexual strategy to go raise another man's kids with no authority to raise those kids. You're, you'll be treated like an ATM. Your financial resources will be welcome, but the boundaries that you set usually aren't. So it's like the juice is not worth the squeeze in those types of scenarios. What would be the one case where maybe it would be okay? Yeah, it's a good question. So, um, if you've got a small child, so when I got divorced, uh, my daughter was four-ish or, you know, something like that. And one of the, one of the problem areas for um, women as they become adults is uh, people aren't staying together, generally speaking. Like the best household for children to be raised in is a two-parent household. After that, it's the father raising the kids. After that, it's the mom. So men do a far better job raising kids as a single parent versus women. The data is very, very clear on that. So the problem that you can run into is if you're a dad with a daughter and you meet a woman and she's got two or three sons, for example, Blood related siblings are not attracted to each other. They don't touch each other. They're not sexually attracted to each other. They're not interested whatsoever. Because of um, Evo Psych, you know, discovering this, that um, we want genetic diversity. Like, uh, it's one of the reasons why I think teenagers become so disagreeable. Like, you know, when their kids are very agreeable and they turn into teenagers, and then that would be around the same time that a young child 2000 years ago or a teen, you know, for example, might have left the tribe and gone to another tribe, genetic diversity. They want to leave. They want to do things on the road. They want to explore sort of thing. And I think that's true today as well. Only, you know, you just deal with a disagreeable teenager that doesn't want to listen to anything that you say. But the problem in a household is if you're living in a house with your daughter and she brings her sons into your house, and let's say you blend families because that's always their idea. Oh, let's blend families. You know, we'll just be like the Brady Bunch and live together sort of thing. Everything will be tickety boo. I can't tell you how many women that I met when I was dating post-divorce that were violated as children by either a stepfather or a step-sibling in that same household. So that's a, that's a huge problem. So the only scenario where I would say for a guy like me where it might be acceptable is she's got a kid, same sex as my daughter, obviously, same age roughly, so they can be friends, they can do cool shit together and entertain each other, sort of stuff like that. And she doesn't have any of the red flags and she's not obese and you know she's attractive and she's got genuine burning desire like and 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 all these things which is i mean like we're talking about finding a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow you know type of scenario so you know the probability of that happening uh, may exist but it's pretty low like i think when i was dating there was one gal that had a kid that had a daughter the same age as mine and she was super attractive and but like nothing ever took off right so I think for the vast majority of guys, you're just better off dating women without kids. Even if you're a father with a kid, I, I still think you're better off dating a woman that doesn't have kids. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.